guys, we made it to Hudson, Florida. The weather's beautiful. This is their very first stay that we've had at an Encore Park. And we've, you know, we've booked a few of them, but we haven't actually stayed at them yet. We have a few coming up in the future. But we just kind of wanted to see what the difference was between an Encore Park and a Thousand Trails Park. So what we're going to do is we are going to report this to you guys. We are in Barrington Hills. It seems like a park where a lot of snowbirds come to. There's a lot of people that are here for the next several months and there's a lot of permanent structures here where people have purchased and they come back every year. So it's a little different dynamic than a lot of the parks that we've been to in the past. Hopefully this video will be a little bit informative for you and maybe help you decide whether you want to stay in an encore park or not. So we're going to start off with amenities. First of all, we have indoor amenities. We have things, they have things here like a clubhouse where they host dances, maybe like a billiard tournaments, things like that. They have pool tables and a gym, a library. There's all kinds of really cool activities that you can do when the weather's not great. I think for me, the best ones are the outdoor activities. They have a heated pool. And when I say heated, it's like, I think they told me 84 degrees. It was super nice when we were in it. They also have shuffleboard, which I've never played. <laughs> um, and they have horseshoes and they have all the supplies to uh, play those. They also have laundry facilities, which is really great, especially for those of you like me that are full timers. So we don't have to go in town and find a laundromat. They have it here and the machines here run on debit cards so that's really nice this is a pet friendly park i see a lot of people walking around with dogs however i believe the rule here is that you can only have two dogs even though i've seen people with three so obviously that's not a real strict rule one of the cool things about this uh, particular park too is they have a dog park where I've seen a lot of people just come, let their dogs run around out there, and they have a, a dispenser uh, for bags so you can clean up your dog waste. So it's kind of nice. One of the perks here is you can receive packages. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but when you start full timing and you go to Thousand Trails Parks, you get charged for this. In fact, Every park I've been to so far, a thousand trails wise, you get a $5 per box charge. So if you're ordering from Amazon and you know, you order a couple things and they don't, you know, uh, multi-pack it, it comes in multiple boxes. It doesn't matter the size of box. You pay $5 per box and that's gotta be cash. Whereas here we got several boxes delivered here, no charge. And in fact, um, sometimes they're delivered right to your site. I'm sure one of the things that you guys are concerned about or are wondering about is internet speeds. So let's take a look at what you can do here for as far as Wi-Fi, or what we do for internet. When it comes to internet, we bring our own. So we actually have three carriers that we use um, just in case one or the other doesn't get good signal. But let's go over the different signals that I've received here and the fact that also they do have Wi-Fi here that's available for purchase. Here is the prices for the Wi-Fi provided by the park. This is my Verizon speed test. Here's my AT&T speed test and T-Mobile. Keep in mind that I have a Wii Boost, so the speed test that I just did reflect that uh, increase in speed. So if you don't have a Wii Boost, your speed will probably be a little bit slower. I think one of the biggest concerns people have about staying in RV parks is how close the sites are together. And that is a concern if you are normally used to camping. Um, you're not going to get a big site here. You're going to be, as you can see, fairly close to your neighbor. But what I will say is, if you notice there's plenty of space for you to park your vehicle, your tow vehicle, along with your RV. And it's really not that loud here, guys. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't hear my neighbors. 
Um, it has been windy lately, so we've been getting a lot of that, but really, as far as park noise, it's pretty quiet. And there's not a lot of kids here. I wouldn't say it's a very kid-friendly park. There's no um, playgrounds, at least not that I could see. It's, and I don't see a lot of kids here. So I would definitely say that if you're thinking about bringing your kids around, there's probably not a lot here for them to do. Unless you're the type to go out and eat dinner out all the time, you're gonna need groceries. And there are plenty of grocery stores that are in close proximity to this park. We saw a few Publix, Winn-Dixie, Aldi's. I did go to the Winn-Dixie and the Publix. There was a good selection. There's also right up the road. It's a it's a locally owned um, vegetable stand, and so they had some really good vegetables there at a great price. So there's a lot of places here close by where you can get your food. So we mentioned in one of our previous videos that we bought season passes to SeaWorld, which includes going to Busch Gardens, and there is a Busch Gardens really close by here, hence why, one of the reasons why we decided to stay here. So today, we are gonna go and check it out. So you wanna go? Let's go. Hi, today we are in Busch Gardens in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. Right, Tampa? That's right. They're celebrating Mardi Gras here today, so lots of extra things to do. Beautiful weather. Oh wow, yeah. For January, this is pretty freaking amazing. This is why we go to places like this. So come along with us and check out all the really cool things that we're going to see today. Oh. the meal plan which gave us this cool little bracelet and what that means is that we can go and have an entree and a drink a side or a dessert every 90 minutes for like 35 bucks each so I think I just my meal alone just now was probably about $20 so I set my alarm on my phone when they scan my bracelet for 90 minutes so we're gonna hit food places every 95 minutes, and I'm going to get my money's worth. You put on that guy and I'll raise All right. Here's one right here. Hungry little guy. There you go. Oh, isn't that sugar good? So good. It's that Florida sweet tea. Yeah. Did you get pooped on? Almost. Tell uh, everybody what a recommended or a wrong thing to drive. If you look at the glass, I bet there's COVID all over this glass. Little fingers and mouths pressing up and noses. Yeah, I'm not touching the glass. Hurricane Simulator. What would happen if we put Amy in the Hurricane Simulator? Let's find out. Right, 
it's going up. Look at me. <laughs> That's, oh yeah, there you go. A little bit of lightning. Hey, look out here. <laughs> <laughs> We're at 55 miles an hour. <laughs> Stay in there! Stay in there! Okay, I'm gonna jump in. feel like that was much of a hurricane. It just felt like maybe a good brisk coastal breeze. I would say it felt like a $5 hurricane. <laughs> All right guys, we're gonna go on the Chic Rock. And it looks like it's one of those roller coasters where you hang your feet and the ride moves, your seats move independently from the ride. So you guys wanna go with us? Come on, let's go. There's no one in line. <laughs> Please stand behind the white line. The I know, that's an insane drop. That's like a completely vertical drop. Oh yeah. Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> So RV life is not always perfect. It's not always, you know, a vacation. Sometimes you get stuck in your RV all day because of crappy weather. Check this out. See those palm trees? See that? We had a tornado warning uh, this morning. We were woken up by the uh, alert on our phone and it actually went right by us. I don't know if it actually became a tornado or not. I guess we'll hear on the news later, but it was pretty scary. Oh, might I add, that's twice now in the last week and a half that we've been in tornado warnings down in Florida in January. We just finished a nine day stay here at Barrington Hills Resort and I liked it. It was really nice. It was a good respite for being on the road constantly and traveling and camping and being in the dirt or whatever. It was kind of nice. You know, it's kind of like being back in a community, like a neighborhood. There's people that live here year round. There's people that live here seasonally and it has a feeling of a neighborhood. So keep that in mind, guys, when you're traveling to places like this, don't go in there expecting it to be like a campground, cause it's not, all right? And I think if you look at it like that, you'd really enjoy being here. You know, we are gonna be going from here to the Tampa RV show. We're super excited. It's like the biggest show in the country. In fact, we've been planning this for a while. So if you check in on our next video, you're gonna see us at the show. We're gonna be boondocking there. 
and we're going to be just kind of going around seeing some, maybe some rvs seeing some new gadgets that are going to be out i don't know i don't know what we're going to be doing there but we'll take you guys along with us remember if you like this video hit the thumbs up subscribe and ring that bell so that you can be notified of all our upcoming videos and until then night guys we'll see ya